If you wanted to hunt a variety of things and you had limited funds, 200 bucks or less, and you wanted something that's reliable, that works, then I get one of these. Hey, it's Greg here with Outdoors on the Cheap, and I thought I'd do a video today talking about uh, aimed at the younger, the new hunter, and uh, the person who doesn't own a firearm and is trying to figure out what to buy and doesn't have a lot of money. This is Outdoors on the Cheap after all. And uh, where I'm coming from is basically you want to buy one firearm that does it all. And by does it all, I mean we'll hunt uh, things like deer, things like rabbit, things like partridge, okay? Uh, when you're getting into ducks, uh, really there's, there's not a, you know, ducks are a different category. Let's just put it that way. Although there's an argument there too, and I'll probably speak to it as the, as the, as the video goes on. But I'm talking about the kind of hunting I'm doing here, where I hunt partridge or, or it's ruffed grouse, pheasant, rabbits, and deer. That's what I hunt. I used to hunt ducks, but I don't hunt them anymore. Um, uh, anyway, for me, if you were going to get one gun to do all that, I mean, many people would make the argument. So, I mean, that the 22 is out because you can't use it for deer and it's not much use for rough grouse. Okay, so forget about 22s. Um, and there's, there's, and again, we're trying to keep this on the cheap. So there are guns you can buy that have a 22 on top and a, and a 20 gauge or a 12 gauge or whatever on the bottom. Uh, you can go that route, but those guns are costly. Uh, many people may make the argument of going with a 12 gauge because a 12 gauge can do it all. And, uh, I'm going to make the argument for the 20 gauge. Um, the 12 gauge, I'm going to explain why, okay, but I agree the 12 gauge will do it all. And, but the 12 gauge, and especially if you wanted a gun for everything, including ducks, um, a semi automatic or pump gauge, uh, pump, pump action 12 gauge will do it all. Um, but that is a big heavy gun to be carrying around. I mean, it depends on what kind of hunting you do, but when I'm rabbit hunting, I'm covering a lot of ground, so I got to carry that thing. When I deer hunt, I do a lot of still hunting, but I also hike a lot. I cover a lot of territory on foot when I'm deer hunting. You don't want to be carrying a semi-automatic 12 gauge around unless you've got huge Hulk Hogan arms. Uh, so for me, the uh, ideal gun is the 20 gauge. And I've got one here that I, I'm going to recommend, which you can't buy new. This is a used one, <laughs> but just to make things more exotic. But you can get these really cheap. That's why I'm going to talk about this particular kind. Um, but another reason to use the 20 gauge is, I mean, it's a great rabbit gun. It's not too much. That's the other thing. A 12 gauge is a bit much gun for rabbits. You can use it. And if you're, you're skilled and you're sort of aiming yeah, I think in front of the nose sort of thing, the, the shot pattern will actually get a headshot for you. Because you're, you know, depending on how far you are, your shot pattern, pattern gets wider and wider as you go out. Um, but anyway, if you're learning to shoot slugs, where I live here, you can use slugs or buckshot for deer out of a shotgun. If you are trying to learn to shoot accurately with slugs. And I mean, buckshot's an option, but the range is even more limited than slugs, right? You have to be pretty close and it can work. And some people talk about the ethics of using it and so on. Um, at the right range, buckshot is deadly. It's devastating, <laughs> right? At the right range, okay? Guys, I said, guys and girls, I said the right range. <laughs> at the wrong range, it just injures things. At the right range, it is devastating. It's buckshot. Uh, but anyway, I'm talking about slugs. If you are trying to learn to shoot accurately with slugs, with a 12 gun, 12 gauge shotgun, um, if you are sensitive to recoil, to how much the gun kicks, you will never shoot accurately. When I was a younger man, I bought a, a one 12, a single shot 12 gauge shotgun because uh, I was convinced that was the all around gun. That was the gun for everything. You can use it for everything. It's the only gun you need. Um, and then I took it to a range to learn how to shoot slugs accurately, accurately with it. And the recoil on that 12 gauge shotgun, even with a re recoil pad, uh, I was, I was flinching when I was shooting. Um, and some people are kind of flinch proof people and some people aren't. <laughs> That's the best way I can put it. Uh, any powerful, and I've tried shooting 30 odd six, I flinch. I tried shooting the, the Mazen Nagant, which is like a 308. I flinch. Um, if you're a person that isn't prone to flinching, then none of this matters for you. Uh, but if you're a new hunter, you don't know that about yourself. Okay. 
and uh, you don't want to develop one either. And uh, with a 20 gauge, it just doesn't kick the way a 12 gauge kicks. So I found with the 20 gauge, with the slug, I could hit things accurately at 50 yards. Uh, you know, so, and that's what we're talking about, right? Range within the 50 yard range. So the reason for the 20 gauge for deer is because if you're the slightest bit sensitive to, to recoil, <laughs> you know, good luck. And if you have a semi-automatic 12 gauge, it doesn't kick as hard because some of that kick goes into reloading it. But then you're carrying around this giant weapon all the time, right? It's one thing if you're just still hunting. You know, if you're if you're driving on an ATV to a deer blind and sitting there and driving on an ATV back to your vehicle to go home, sure, that'll work just fine. But if you're walking everywhere, remember this is outdoors in the Chief, so I'm talking to the person who maybe doesn't own an ATV, doesn't have any of that stuff, is walking because um, I spent years of my life in that category. So, to me, you can get these guns really cheap. Um, I got this for maybe 150 bucks. Um, none of them are mint condition anymore, and, and it doesn't matter. You want it operating, operational. This one even has a, uh, I think a, this uh, trigger guard here, there's a bit of a crack here. This still works just fine. A little bit of uh, What's that stuff called? JB Weld. There's a kind of JB Weld putty you can use to just fix things really easily. Almost like uh, Mighty Putty, this stuff uh, Pitchman Billy Mays used to sell. But anyway, easy to fix. Minor things are easy to fix on guns. Major things, you have to take them to a gunsmith. Um, anyway, this looks like some sort of badass sniper rifle <laughs> from World War II. <laughs> And, you know, it probably is made in a factory that was set up to do that sort of thing. But this is a 20 gauge shotgun. I think this is, uh, this is a Mossberg. Made in New, Han New Haven, Con Connecticut, USA. Yeah. Model 185KB, 20 gauge, 2 and 3 quarter inch. Okay, so you can get these for 150 bucks. Nobody wants them. Nobody wants them. Um, you know, people tend to want pump action, just semi-automatics. These don't have the rate of fire and they don't have the magazine capacity. You can put two shells in here, right? You, you can have a third one in the chamber. So at the, very, the maximum, you might have three, three rounds, one in the chamber, two in the magazine. Okay, um, I never have that money. <laughs> I basically, I put two in here, right? You put two shells in, you put the clip in, right? You chamber the round and you're off to go, right? Um, it's got a safety, just a little simple red, red's hot, green safe, right? Little uh, just a safety like that, really low tech. This one's not loaded right now. Um, it's got a really uh, simple sight. It actually almost feels like, you know, a V sight. Um, it's got a bead at the front and it's got this variable choke. That's the other reason this thing's so versatile. Right, so you can have it right now. It's on full choke because about rabbit hunting. It's like the last day of rabbit season, um, so it has a full modified and improved cylinder. Okay, so the advantage of that is you can put it on full when you're hunting birds. I like it on full when I'm hunting rabbits because I, I don't want to make a mess of the thing. But you can switch it to modified or improved cylinder if you're using slugs. Right. Uh, depending on what you're what you're after, All right? So you've got the the options, and I mean, a lot of these older ones, this is missing. It's got these kind of cool vents. It makes a really cool sound when you fire it. Um, but I have found um, just working on my accuracy. I'm very accurate with this, and placements everything. You can totally take a deer with a 20 gauge shotgun if you're at the right range, under 50 yards. Okay. Um, so maybe 35 yards, depending on how confident you are. Um, most, I mean, I hunt in the thick, heavy woods, right, all the time. So most of the time when I see a deer, it's it's under 50 yards. Every deer I've ever shot has been less than 50 yards. <laughs> if I hunt the thick woods, I still hunt. The deer get close. Um, and that's a, a good way to go also if you're a new hunter, is the still hunting at close range. Because when you start trying to make really long distance shots, that's when you start spending a lot of money on scopes and rifles and you start getting, you know, just obsessed with accuracy and range. If you take accuracy and range out of the equation, you're basically shooting 35 yard shots. A slug gun is just fine for that, right? And then you have the versatility of a gun you can use for rabbits, you can use for 
um, you know, game birds and stuff like that. Um, so, and, and there are, you know, shot you can buy for these if you're out turkey hunting or something like that. We don't have turkeys where I live, um, but a, a this would be fine for turkey. It'll, 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 you know, that sort of thing. It'd be fine for that. So, that's my advice for the new hunter. If I could, if I had to empty out my gun case and I was down to one thing, I was going to keep one thing. I'm not talking about, you know, the bug out scenario. I find these YouTube videos where guys talk about their bug out gun. I find them farcical, quite frankly. Um, I would say 99% of the people on YouTube telling you what to do in a bug out situation, that's the last person you'd want to listen to. Uh, the last person on earth. <laughs> Uh, it's just my opinion anyway. <laughs> Ammo is the least important thing. <laughs> Learning how to hide <laughs> is probably much more useful. <laughs> Learning how to hide, stay hidden, and stay fed and warm while you're hiding and staying hidden, I think is a, a better skill than figuring out what the right uh, weapon is to bring around with you. Because um, every fight you avoid, you win. <laughs> every, every conflict you avoid, you win <laughs> because you're alive. Uh, anyway, I'm getting off topic here. So that's my advice. If you only had to have one gun and you were into bird hunting, rabbit hunting, deer hunting, uh, I can't speak to every variety of deer, but for white deal deer at the, you know, within that 50 yard range, a 20 gauge. And one of these kind of bolt action, old 1950s, 1960s, that's when they made these. They made a whole bunch of them in the 60s, 50s or something like that, right after World War II. And then, because people, you know, at that point in time, shotguns were single shot and, and double barrel. And pump actions and semi-automatics weren't as ubiquitous as they are now. Um, so people wanted a, a, a gun they could get more than one shot out of for, for things like ducks and things like that. And they developed all these bolt action rifles for World War II and everything you know all of those factories are trying to you know make a few sales before <laughs> right just you know what is it where they're trying to uh, cash in on their infrastructure and achieve an economy of scale let's put it that way they were set up to make guns like this so they made a whole bunch and flooded the market with them and a lot of people bought them and then within a decade or so uh, pump actions and semi-automatics were every, everywhere and nobody wanted these things and nobody still wants these things Right, so you can get them really cheap. Is is I'm not saying this is the greatest gun ever. I'm saying if you wanted to hunt a variety of things and you had limited funds, 200 bucks or less, and you wanted something that's reliable, that works, that would allow you to do all of that in one weapon, one firearm, then I'd get one of these for hunting. Right, that's what I would get. A bolt action 20 gauge. You can get these in 16 gauge as well, but uh, the ammunition is hard to find. 20, that's the other thing about 20 gauge ammo. It's cheaper than 12 gauge in general. At least here in Canada it is where I live. Um, so the ammo is cheaper. <laughs> it's just uh, the ammo is lighter, right? It's, it's easier to carry these in your pocket, right? Than uh, 12 gauge, they weigh less. Um, but at the right range, they're perfectly deadly. I mean, think of the, think of the, the diameter of this, right? The 20 gauge, right? <laughs> Right? is greater than 50 caliber, right? Uh, you put a slug in that, it's a lot of lead. As long as you're at within the right range, that's uh, you know a devastating weapon. Properly placed at the right range. So, just a couple of ideas with the new hunter in mind. Low on cash, high on enthusiasm, wants to do everything, can only afford one firearm. I think the old bolt action, Stevens made these, Mossberg made a number of different uh, firearms manufacturers made these. I think Harrington and Richardson made them. There's a whole bunch. If you go on different online sites where they sell used stuff, you can find these, right? Or you go to gun shows, you can usually find these cheap because nobody wants them, right? Especially a lot of young guys. They want semi-automatic weapons because all of their information, they uh, all the ideas they have in their head about guns is based on watching TV shows where guys are using, uh, you know, what looks like military weapons to me uh, or movies or hunting shows where they're trying to sell you stuff that you can't afford um, but something like this no one's advertising these but you can find them and they're cheap because nobody wants them but they work fine they're reliable and they work just fine and they'll do everything you want and at some point in your life if you've got all kinds of money you can get everything you want 
<laughs> but if, uh, you know, if times are tight, this is the one you want. Uh, anyway, just a few thoughts about uh, firearms, versatility, and saving a few bucks uh, while still being able to gauge in a variety of different types of hunting. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Until next time, enjoy the outdoors on the cheap. Thanks for watching.